Good evening, everyone. It's August 8th, Thursday, a few minutes after 7. We're running a few minutes late. We had to move our equipment because we have rotor issues and the internet wasn't working, so we're going to try it closer in the rotor room. So, it's been a rush here. <laughs> so, we're going to paint our rain our gangbuster reindeer that was part of our Christmas in July box. Sorry for being late tonight, but we thought it was better to move and not have um, slow video that wasn't usable for you guys. So um, we're ready to get going. So this is our reindeer and he's the last one in our Christmas in July box tonight. And if you um, base coated him the medium brown, he should look something like this. And I did this um, earlier this afternoon so he would be dry. If, he, if you didn't do yours, that's okay. Um, you can just watch along. So what we're going to do is dry brush him now. And I'm going to use the um, Duncan Light Brown. And I'm going to shake it up a little bit. And just put a little bit on my aluminum foil. And I use the foil so I can just roll it up and throw it out when I'm done. And I'm going to use, oh, let's see, I'm going to use my Royal and Lang Nickel size 8 brush. That should work pretty good for him. So you can see that his antlers are very light colored, so we'll have to do a lot on there. We're just going to do a little bit on his belly, and then a little bit on his face, and a little more on his ears. And then we'll actually take the, the, media, the light brown and add a little bit of white to get it a little bit... Um, more of a coffee color to do his horns with after we do the light brown. So, hope everyone had a good week. I'm just gonna use my dry brush and work a little bit. I just grabbed a little bit from the edge and I'm just gonna work that in. And then I'm going to brush that out on a piece of paper towel and you can see there's no um, real lot there. So we're just going to um, dry brush him and this will take quite a bit. So I grabbed a little more and I'm brushing it out. So we'll just keep building that up on his belly and on his face. The um, base coating with the dry brushing, if you can do that an hour before or a day before you're dry brushing, that, that's a, the, the next layer of color goes on a lot nicer once that's good and dry like that. So I'm just dry brushing away on his belly. You can go back and forth, you can go around. I tend to do, like I guess you could say a C stroke or a half a circle. And I'm going to do all, all of him, but I'm going to do the belly more than anything. But we will do his, his whole brown body just to get a little more color to it. And through here I'll just go back and forth. And just get a little bit of color there. Just grab a little and brush it out. So Courtney's got, looks like her phone set up for me tonight instead of my tablet. I'm not sure we were, kind of it was a rush here to move everything because she did the test for how active it was and it wasn't active enough. I don't know if it's because um, we had tornado in the area last night um, by Green Bay and there's a lot of lines down there. So I don't know if that's affecting us a little bit or not. It's been quite the summer for bad weather here. So I'm just going to get all, all of him. You can get his horns too. And you can see when I base coated, I wasn't real, real, I didn't spend a lot of time around the mittens and around the um, hooves. We'll, we'll line that out with the red and the black, just that saves time. So 
So I hope everyone's having a good week and I hope this is for August on Monday. Monday. <laughs> it's been a week here. Everybody's uh, was out for delivery today. So um, Courtney says Courtney says that everyone's was out for delivery today, so hopefully you all have yours. You should be able to check with the tracking number that she sent you. And we'll be working on that next week. Um, we'll have to grab the... I'm trying to remember what colors I base coated with well, without looking at them. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this light brown on all of the medium brown just because that will give it more color and texture and depth because he's got a little bit of texture on him so that just highlights that a little bit. And I'm just grabbing a little and brushing it out. The brush is fairly dry when you do that. It's been a busy week because we have a craft show on. We leave tomorrow and then we're there Saturday and Sunday. So I don't do a whole lot on the medium brown on the body, but just enough so that you have an extra layer of color there. And bring it around onto the bottom because you always want your, when you base coat, make sure you base coat your bottom because you always want that to look nice too. Is everyone painting their pieces so far from their um, July box? Anyone have any problems with anything? Any questions? So I just gave the bottom a little bit of color too just so it matches and I want to get on the side here. I have these in the so you can't go too far out of frame. Okay, so Courtney says she's zoomed in, so I hope that helps. So I'm just making sure his whole body is the same color of light brown right now, including his antlers. Oh, and that's a little too much, so I'm going to brush that out some more. And get those antlers because they have to get a lot lighter yet. And I'm going to get in here a little more. Looks like I could be in the middle of the screen more. Oh, that was in the middle, huh? Okay, so now I'm going to get his belly and his face a little more and his antlers a little more. And it's the same light brown. I'm just going to lighten up that belly like a deer. And it has a, the lighter belly. And let me see, the same with his face, but I'm going to do more just of his um, muzzle, his nose, I guess you could say. I'm just going to come around the mouth, cross the um, nose there, we'll blacken up the nose, or red later. So I'm just doing those C strokes again, those half circles, just building up that um, nose, face mouth area so I'll just grabbing the paint and brushing it out Get a little more down by his mouth 
And grab a little and brush out. Get a little more on his belly here so we can see that he's got a belly. I'm just going in a circle just to keep, just build it up and get it nice and even. So it's not zigzaggy. Maybe a little more on there. I'm gonna grab a little more. Now we're going to work on his antlers. Because we want to get those a lot lighter. So just grab some light brown and work, brush it on there. And I'm going to brush right up to the ears. Grab a little light brown and brush it out. And just keep getting that whole antler. Grab a little light brown and brush it out. So I did get the next box painted up and glittered. And I think we have the I took the picture. I don't know if Courtney's going to use that picture or a different picture, but I think you guys will get be getting a sneak peek of that pretty quick here. Wow. Tomorrow, she says. It was a lot of fun figuring out that box and what's all going to be in it. And this is all new to us, so as we go, things will improve, too. So. It's just a great opportunity for everyone that doesn't have access to a shop locally. You guys can just tune in, and the videos are saved, so you can actually paint at your leisure. Um, if you're not painting along tonight, you can always come back and paint it another time when you have time. Okay, so that antler's looking pretty good. And now I'm going to switch over to the other one. If you have a beige color or a bone color, you could use that next, but to cut down on all the colors in the box, so we're just going to add a little bit of white to our light brown, and um, we'll do it that way this time. You just want to make sure you have enough of the mixed up color to finish your piece, because it'll be hard to like remix the color to match. So I'm just brushing on there kind, kind of gently. Sometimes in a back and forth, sometimes in a C stroke. There are different shapes, so you kind of have to do different things to get into all the little angles. And you want to get down in. And you, and you do want to leave a little bit of darkness in, in those little um, hollowed out areas, because that would be sh shadows if you were looking at a deer. And it'll be lighter up here because the more light would be hitting it up there. And you want to always turn him and look at him from different angles to make sure you have everything covered kind of evenly. So I've seen this wasn't covered quite as e good over here. Okay. Well, he's looking pretty good. Just got a nice light, light coat of light brown over the top of the... Medium brown. Everybody's box was delivered or available for pickup. Other than the paint and paper towel, what are you teaching for? I'm not sure what she means. Um, we use the paint, the paper towel. Um, I just have oh reaching for okay. I'm maybe you can't see the paint. Um. I have the aluminum foil with my paint on. I have um, my paper towel 
with the and when I reach across the front I'm reaching actually to the tablet because it um, blacks out and I can't see your comments that might be what you're probably what I'm reaching for it's just I'm just reaching to move the comments up on the tablet so I can um, see your guys's comments I'll try to maybe use my um, left hand like now it blacked out so I'm going to use my left hand and um, bring the comments back up so that, that's all I'm reaching for is my tablet so I can see your comments if you guys have questions okay so he's looking pretty good and even his um, through here it's lighter his belly is lighter his antlers have a lot more of the light brown on them and then his whole body's got just a little bit of the light brown just to bring bring out like the texture that's in the mold so that looks pretty good so now I have a little pile of light brown here but I'm going to add a little more just because I want to make sure I have enough of the light color that I'm going to use and I'm just going to use some Doc Holiday white and actually I did that wrong when you're mixing colors you want to use your lightest color and you want to add your darker color to your light color so I'm just going to take a round um, Oh, this is a Royal and Langnickel size 5 nylon brush and I'm going to add a little bit of that light brown to my white because I want to get this um, like a bone coffee color but if you have if you would happen to have beige or bone you could use that color instead of um, mixing up a color and I just want to make sure I have enough um, to do those horns that I don't run out so it's, I'm just going like a shade lighter um, than the light brown and if I would have added my white to my brown it would have took a ton of white white so it's always good to mix put a pile of your light color and then add the drops of your dark color to it so it's going to dry a little bit darker than what it is but I think I want it just a little bit darker it's a little light yet But if you would happen to have the ceramic paints and you have beige or bone, um, that would be an ad a adequate color to use in exchange for uh, mixing up a color. I was just trying to save you guys from having to buy extra colors. So I know the paints all add up. So we try to reuse as much as we can. So that's mixed up pretty good. I think I'm going to go just a little bit darker yet. You just want a real light brown, um, beige, bone color. And I have more than enough, which is good, because you don't want to not have enough when you're doing this. So it's all mixed up good. I'm going to wash out my brush. And now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to continue with my same dry brush that I had, and now I'm going to do his little um, antlers, and we're going to lighten those up. I'm just going to grab a little bit, brush it out, and now we'll brush his antlers. So now my screen blacked out, so I'm going to um, see what you guys are writing. So there, that's what the reaching is for. So, so now we're just going to slowly build up this color, and it, it won't take all, all of what I have mixed up, but I'd rather have enough than not enough. And so I'm just going to get it on his little antlers and you can leave it darker in here and maybe a little darker down here and then it can be lighter a lot lighter up here because that's where more light would be hitting them hitting it so I just want to brush my brush out good so in um for December's box, we're going to be doing color wash. We're going to start with a color wash, um, the pro cup, at least one of the projects, maybe two. We'll see. So that's something to look forward to for the December box. So I'm just lightly dry brushing his antler, getting it lighter. So you can, you can mix your own colors, it does work. 
You just want to make sure that you have enough for whatever you're doing. I'm just going to keep building it up on that one. I'm going to get the tip a little more, and that was a little too much, so I'm going to brush that out. And the tip will be a, a lot lighter than the bottom part of the antler because there would just be more light up there. And under under here it's going to be a little darker because that, that would be shadowing under there. So I'm just going to grab a little more and we'll start on the other one now. So I did paint up the the next box and it, it took um, 12 colors and then it took six add-on colors if you're someone that's been getting the colors. I try to use the least amount and reuse as many as I can but that one was kind of hard. There's a lot of, lot of colors in it with the purples and but they're really it's really cute. I can't wait for you guys to see it. And if anyone wants to sign up, you can just send us a message and Courtney can send you an invoice. Um, she usually does it right away. If for some reason you wouldn't get your invoice, at least within a day, uh, maybe check your spam folders. Because she takes care of that stuff right away. Now this weekend we're, we're going to be gone. Uh, we probably won't be monitoring messages as closely. Um, internet is an issue where we're going because there's so many people on the internet we couldn't get on the internet last year. So we you may not get messages right, answers right away, Saturday, um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, but Monday they would be, ta you know, we'll get, get to everyone. So if you could be patient with us with that. If um, we may have better internet in the evening when all the shoppers aren't there, so we may be able to answer some. But it's a pretty long day, and you just want to, like, go to bed. <laughs> so don't expect answers Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but we will get to you on Monday if you haven't heard from us. So his little antlers are looking pretty good. They're lighter than um, his body, but I think I'm going to get them just a little lighter yet. It's just more of a solid lightness. Whoop, and that was way too much. As you can see, that's like filled it right in, and I didn't want to do that. So I'm just going to try to work it out. I think Cordy said everyone's boxes were out for delivery, so you should be have your boxes today. Or available for pickup. We had a few PO boxes. Or she says available for pickup because a couple were PO boxes. So um, let us know what you guys think of the boxes, what you like, what you don't like. Oh, there is someone posted a pick, Bonnie. Great, love it. We tried to put a lot of work in, you know, a lot of thought into it to make it fun and. Even even with the painting, you know, I'm trying to not just paint it, but try to tell you guys what I'm doing and why I'm doing it um, to help. So when you're painting alone, you, you know, you kind of have some guidance to go by. So I'm just getting his horns a little more solid um, of the light color. But definitely let us know what, what you like about the boxes, what you don't like. Um, feel free to share pictures on the on the page on Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque on Facebook. That'd be great.
Deb says dry brushing is her all-time favorite. Uh, I don't know. I like doing all of it. Last night I glazed pumpkins and today I glazed um, Christmas trees. And they're fun too. Probably the funner part though is when you open the kiln and you see that they're all well, they changed from a maybe a brown to the orange or red to green. So I'm just getting this a little bit lighter yet. This, this one's like more solid where this one's more spotty, so I want I want this one to get more solid. And then you want to look from the top down too. Now I could see this one here was real light dark yet, so I needed to lighten it up. So you want to look at your pieces from all angles. So if it was sitting on a shelf, you would see all the different angles that someone might see your work from, and you want it to look nice. Okay, so he's looking pretty good. Oh, he needs a little more here. This is pretty spotty here. And I'm just kind of doing those half circles, half um, C strokes. So I like that. Now I'm going to grab a smaller brush and get a little bit inside his ears. Oh, let's see, where did it go? Um, this is just a um, Royal and Lang nickel size zero, and it's actually the brush, one of the brushes that will be in next month's box as, as your extra item, besides your bisque and your instruction sheet and inventory sheet, there's extras in the boxes, and um, next month you'll be getting brushes. Oh, so now i got to tell you what I'm doing. I'm adding a little bit of that um antler color to the bottom of his in his ears here to lighten that up because usually they're that's a little bit lighter in their ears so i'm just grabbing it and i went to a little littler brush because it is such a small area so i'm just going to lighten that that bottom of that ear up a little bit and then i'm actually going to take a little bit of my uh, medium brown and I'm going to darken the top of the ear, a, a bunch of the, not a bunch, but some of the antler color got onto his ear. So I'm just going to darken that up a little bit so it doesn't, and I, actually I need a whole new dot of that because it's kind of too light. So I'm going to get some medium brown, just a drop of it, and get that in my dry brush, and work it out. And then I'm just going to get that, where that antler color is on that ear. I just want to cover that up a little bit so it doesn't look like it's, um, doesn't belong there. Because <laughs> that would be more of a shadow there than a lightness. So we're just going to work that back in there. And then we'll let it inside the ear there. And the same with this ear, you can see that the antler color got on to the ear, but I want that a little bit back to that brown color. That way it doesn't look like it was messy and like it didn't belong there. Okay, so that looks looking pretty good there now. So he's got his light color at the bottom of the ear and his ears are back to the dark brown, the medium brown, I'm sorry. So now we can do his mittens, and we will use rust, and I forgot to bring the red up, Courtney. Thank you. So now I'm going to use rust, and I'm going to base coat his mittens, and you can use rust or terracotta, those either one of those colors. Um, right now you can't get um, rust from Doc Holliday. Or I can't get it from Glazers, they don't have it, it's out of stock. So I'm just going to use the rust, and I'm going to load up my brush, and I'm just um, 
dragging my brush through and turning a little bit to get a nice point. And now I'm I'm going to um, drag draw, or draw the and what I have is a nylon round size five Royal and Lane Nickel brush, and I'm just going to draw that brush along to, towards me where the mitten and the deer meet. So we kind of want a nice straight line there. So I'm resting my um, deer in my hand, and I'm going to rest my hand on my deer as well because that you just need a nice steady um, surface. So I'm just going to. Grab a little more, and sometimes you have to, instead of pulling it, you have to pull it away. But I just want to get that nice line along there, and I'm going to turn him. Grab a little more rust. And even though he's up in the air, my hand, my left hand is anchored on the table. My bottom two fingers are anchored on to his mitten. And I'm just going to pull the brush towards me, but I'm also turning him with my hand so I can go further without having to stop and start. So again, I'm going to come back. So now when, when I want to pick up where I left off, I usually start into the rust and then I merge over to the line where the deer and the mitten meet. So I start up in the rust and I draw down into it and line it up and I'll do that again um, so I'm starting in in the rust in the mitten and I'm drawing merging down into the line where it where it meets the deer and that way you get a nice straight line and you it's really hard to like start at the straight line but if, if you start up in in the rust like maybe an eighth of an inch away from the line draw your brush just like you're merging into traffic and draw your brush to that line and you'll get a nice straight line that way so now I'm just gonna um, base coat the mitten the rest of the way with the rust and the reason I do the rust is it's a it's a good base coat for the red there's red in the rust and you get a really good bright red when you use um, like the rust or a terracotta as your base coat for the red. I also do that for orange. I'll use the rust or the terracotta, the Doc Holiday rust or terracotta. And it just gives a nice, a, a really good base coat and, and they cover a lot better. So I gotta grab some more rust and it's just the Doc Holiday rust. Um, Courtney has the list on the video so if you have any questions, you can refer to that for the colors. And feel free to substitute colors or do if you wanted blue mittens, do blue mittens. You don't have to do red mittens. Um, we, I just tried to do each piece a different color, like the penguin was pur purple, the snowman was blue, and now the reindeer was red because he's got a red nose, so I thought the red mittens would go with it. But you could do green mittens, blue mittens, it, it doesn't matter, whatever, whatever trips your trigger. So that's got a nice base coat on it now. So now we're going to switch over to the other one. And you got to be careful not to get your hand into that wet paint. And again, I'm going to um, rest him down on the table, rest my two last two fingers on his mitten, start in, in the mitten, and draw to the line, and then just merge right where I want that nice straight line. And see, so you get a nice straight line that way. So now I'm going to, now his antler is what's based on the table, but I, I'm still, he's still sturdy, and that's what you got to have a sturdy, he's got to be sturdy in order to paint straight lines. So again, I'm going to start in, in about an eighth of an inch up in, in the mitten, merge down into my line where the mitten and the deer meet. And you just get a nice straight line like that. So now on the top here, it's a little harder. I'm actually going to start in the mitten part and go away from me instead of towards me. You can you can do that too, but I still merged to my previous line. And here I'll do the same thing. Just merge to that line and now I can base coat him out. 
And you don't want to um, like really brush hard so you have splatters and get splatters on your reindeer because he's already painted. So I need a little more rust. So he, he actually paints up pretty quickly. These were good starter pieces. They had some detail, not a whole lot, but enough. Um, some pieces were painted and some have dry brushing on them. So it was just a good starter kit and Christmas in July was a good little theme. So that's what we started with. And we kind of thought of the idea already back in December, so it was Christmas and like Christmas in July, and it just all kind of went together. So now I'm just making sure I got the whole mitten cut covered in orange, or the rust, sorry. And I'll come back and look at that one, and there's a little bit of white here, so I'll just give it a little more rust. Okay, so there's our rust mitten. So now I'm going to wash out my brush. And I'll just use the same brush again. And now I have the Duncan True Red. And I'm going to draw draw through my paint and get a point on there again and just kind of load it up. And I'll go to the first mitten that we were doing because that's the driest. And now we're just going to cover our rust up with the True Red. And so I'm going to start in the rust and merge to my line that meets the deer. And just you just want to match that up nice. You see that you only need one coat. That, that really helps your red cover really well by having that rust um, base coat on there. So again, I'm going to start in my red, merge down to my line, and then just brush it out. Grab a little bit of red, turn it, start up in the red, merge down to my rust line. And I'm turning the deer just a little bit so I could get my brush to go a little further. Now I have his antler on the table. I have my second finger on his mitten. I'm going into the red, merging down to the line where the rust and the deer meet. And again, I'll do the same thing. And we've made it all the way around, and it's a nice clean line. And now we can base coat the rest of that mitten with our red. And when you're base coating, you, you just want to brush it out so it's nice, nice and smooth. And the paint will actually kind of level itself, and it won't have the brush marks. I'm just turning him and base coating him. Being careful not to splatter it because I don't want red on my deer. Well, there's one little red mitten. So now we can switch to the other one. And again, you got to be careful so you don't get that red on you and all over him. So here we go again. We're going to start on our rust, draw or pull towards you. That's how I do it. And I'm just going to merge down to where the rust and the brown meet. And then brush that out so there's no extra layer there. Again, grab a little bit of red, rest that antler on the table so you have a nice steady surface. Draw your red. And now there's enough in there that I could go a little bit further. Paint that out. Grab a little more. And we're just going to... And sometimes you have to start over so your line, if your line isn't matching up quite right, like it wasn't right there. So I'm going to just do it again. So this, the top part of the mitten is probably the hardest part. So 
just brush that out. Now I need to bring it from the back to the front and match them up. And there we go. Now I'll just base coat the rest of the mitten. And I'm just brushing back and forth till it's brushed out and there's no surplus paint. So is anyone painting along tonight or are you guys just watching and then going to paint later? Has anyone painted theirs already? How's that? Oh, Lisa, Courtney says Lisa's painted hers already. So now I'm going to come back over to the other mitten and I'm going to just give it another coat just because sometimes the red can... You can see the rust through it just a little bit. So we're going to just give it one more coat. And now we'll let that other mitten dry before we give it a second coat and we'll go to the feet. I'm going to wash out my brush and I'm just using the same brush again and I'm going to use some Doc Holiday Black. And my squeezer thing is plugged so I'm just going to pour it out. I use the big bottles because I use so much paint. So come on. And it doesn't take a whole lot. And I'm making sure my fingers aren't full of red. Now we're going to load up our black and I'm just pulling the brush through the black and kind of um, turning it counterclockwise just a little bit because it brings your brush to a nice point if you do that plus you're loading up the color into your brush. So that's got a nice point on it and it's loaded up. And now I'm going to, oh let's see, I'm going to rest, rest one foot on the table and I'm going to rest this right hand on his hoof and I'm just going to start where the little line is where the hoof meets the reindeer and draw towards me to paint his little hoof in. Just line it out and then you want to brush that out so you don't have a ridge. Grab a little paint again, start in the black again and work over to the line and just pull it towards you. If it's a little crooked, you can go back and straighten it out. Grab a little paint. Pull it towards you. And I'm actually moving the deer down also at the same time right now, just so I can get it easier. And we're going to go right on to the back, and we're going to join up the top, with the front with the back. Because we want our bottoms to look as good as our tops. So I just... Painted over, just draw my line over it so the front meets the back. And now I can fill that in. And that way your piece, if someone picks it up to look at it, it just, it just looks more done and professional. So now we're just going to fill in the rest of the hoof. You just brush it out. And there we go. One little hoof is done. So he's coming around. So I'm going to turn him around. Grab that black again. I'm holding him in my hand, but my hand is resting on the table. I'm going to start on the bottom here and draw right towards me. Go as far as your paint will take you or your finger can reach. Grab that black again. Now I gotta turn him. Start in the black, merge down to where the brown and the black meet. And I'm turning the deer and I'm drawing the brush towards me. And I'm actually using my second finger. I'm got that like anchored onto his hoof there too to help secure it. 
so it's not moving all around the place. So there. Now again, I'm going to join up my front black line to my back black line. And his horn's resting on the table. My second finger's resting on him, and I'm just going to join the black back with the front. And then brush that out. You'll see how hit the bottom looks finished now. You know, it'll look finished because you did that instead of not having edges of paint like right at the edge where you would have stopped. I'm going to switch him around and just grab a little more black here. Brush it out good so you don't have ridges, puddles, dots. around make sure you got the sides all the way to the bottom so there now his little feet are all done so I'm going to hold that up so it doesn't get paint off it yet because it's still wet and I'm washing out my brush and now I did get a little bit of black on his mitten so we're gonna have to cover that up or maybe I can wash a little off with a little saliva here and then we'll just cover it up Yeah, it looks like we need a little more red on there, too. Um, you'll find that reds are your hardest colors to get when painting. Whether it's under glazes or glazes or the stains, they're, they're just the hard, hard color. But they're better than they were years ago, if that's any help. So I still got that little black dot there, so I'll cover that up. Might take a couple coats, and I think we needed to get another coat on this one. Courtney, could you would you be able to show me a picture of the next box so I can tell them which what to base coat? I can't. I have to see the piece to look at it. I don't know. Do you have a picture of the next box? I'm just brushing out that red and now I'm gonna brush out my wash out my brush hold him while he dries here for a second okay let's see we have a raccoon a fox a owl the squirrel and the birds um, the raccoon the squirrel and the birds can all be base coated in black entirely and look, maybe we'll start with those guys next week. I don't know that we're going to get to all of them, but if you want to base coat your raccoon, your squirrel, and your birds entirely in black, that's what we'll start with. So, And if you don't want to and you want to um, follow along, that's good too. But if you want to get started and you want to base coat them, you can start with those guys in the black. So now we're going to move to his little um, nose and his little eyes. Um, his eyes are black with a little white line in them and then his nose is red so we're gonna have to do the rust on his nose too so I have a majestic um, Royal Majestic 504595 liner and I'm gonna draw get that in my rust here and get it loaded up and get a point on it so I'm just drawing it through there and looks like I need a little more rust that I could get away without it, but just a drop. So I'm just drawing it in there and, and turning it clockwise to get it on a nice point. Hopefully you can see that nice point on there. So now, let's see, we're going to have to be careful with his little mittens. I don't want to get those on me and get red everywhere. So now I have my rust and we're just going to outline his little nose. And I usually like more of a liner brush for these little detail areas. We're just going to line out his nose with the rust. Well, that looks good. Now I'm going to wash that out. 
And now we're going to go to the black and do the eyes. So I'm just going to run my brush through the black and do that um, clockwise turn about a quarter, like from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and that loads that up real nice. And now I'm going to hold him on my hand, on the table, I guess, the way it looks. Um, and we're going to outline his little eyes. So I, li I like to start like at 1 o'clock or 11 o'clock, but not at 12 o'clock, because that's like the very top, and that would draw your attention to that if that wasn't lined up good. So you kind of have to turn him as you go to get that. angle so you can get it oh so that's one eye we'll grab a little more and we're going to go to the other eye so I'm going to start like at 11 o'clock and draw right over the top go back to 11 and bring it down and fill it in and it looks like it needs a little more at about 10 o'clock let's add a little more there so I put my brush at about 7 and bring it to 5 and then come back around the other side just to like get a nice round nice and round so they look fairly even this one's a little more pointed at the bottom, so I'm going to see if I can round it out a little bit. So you, you do want to look at your eyes once they're done. So I don't know if, if you can see that. This one is more round, and this one's more pointy. I don't like that, so I'm going to make this one more round to match the other one. And sometimes you do, it works, and sometimes it don't. Now the bottom is rounded out better, but now the top is more pointy, so we're going to get that top more rounded out to match the other one too. So there, that's now his eyes look more even. This one isn't as pointy as it was. So now that I have the black in my brush, I'm actually going to dip my brush in the water and brush it out on my foil. So it's real thin like ink. Hopefully you can see that. So I just dip the brush in the water and I'm brushing it out so it's real thin. I want it to come out of my brush because now I'm going to draw. I'm going to take that thinned out black and draw his mouth line. And I just want a little bit of color in there. And I brought it down to it. So now I'm going to go back in that inky black that I had and come over to this side and do the same thing and I probably won't be able to make it the whole way but I'm going to go past center. Courtney I need the cranberry too if you don't mind. And now I went back in that inky black and I'm going to come back to this cheek and I'm going to draw down to that one and Try to keep them the same width. And there it got a little thin and then a little wide, so I'm going to come back. And just make them more the same. I'm going to grab a little bit of that inky stuff. Thank you. So now I'm going to grab a little more inky stuff and do his little, just a little bit on these ends where his little smile is. A little more of the inky stuff. And I'm just going real light. So now he's got his little cute little face.
Now I'm going to brush up, wash out that um, black. And we're going to go over to the red, load up my red, which was the Duncan True Red. And now we can go over the top of our nose again. Unless you don't want a Rudolph red nose, you don't have to do it in red. You could do it in maybe a black. I think deer's um, noses are usually black, but since he's a Christmas reindeer, we're going to make him Rudolph. There we go. We got that lined out. Now we can fill it in. He's actually going really quick. I thought um, he was going to take a lot longer longer on camera to do than he did. So, so there he is. He's got his little red nose now. I'm going to wash out the brush again. And I got to, excuse me, I got to take a drink. Okay. So he's got his little red nose, he's got his little red mittens, and let's see, he needs some little white in his eyes. So we're going to need a little bit of white. And I just used some Doc Holiday white, and again I got the big bottles. We only need a drop, because we're going to put some on his mittens too, and his nose. Wash my brush again, just to make sure it's clean, and I'm going to grab a drop, drop of white from my water bucket and I'm gonna just kinda get this inky thin and get it loaded up in my brush and I'm just turning it from like 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock it's nice and thin like ink and I'm gonna do a comma and um, when you're doing the eyes, you want to do your comma on the same on the right side or the left side of each eye, but you want to do it either both eyes on the right side or both eyes on the left side. If you do one on the left and one on the right, they're going to look cross-eyed. So we do do them both on the left or both on the right, just as long as it's the same. So I tend to do them both on the right. So I have that inky um, thinned out with just a drop of water white in my brush. And I'm going to touch the top of the eye and I'm going to draw a comma or a backwards half of the C. So I'm going to touch the white down and then I'm going to draw it down and lift it up so it gets thinner at the bottom. And I usually don't talk when I'm doing that because when you breathe out, Right before you breathe in is when your body is the stillest, and that at that at that point is when I do that white line. So that's what I'm gonna do. So here we go. So that looks awful. <laughs> so my paint is too thin. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of the white and mix it into my inky stuff. And I'm going to let that dry, and we're going to cover that up with black. And that's how it goes when you're really doing stuff. It don't always turn out good. So we're just going to let that one dry. And now I was on the right side of that eye, so now I'm going to go on to the right side of the other eye, and we're going to do it again. So that's better, but it's not the greatest. So I'm going to um, come back to this other one, and I'm going to darken it on the right side of my line, but then I'm going to come back with the black and get rid of that white where there's too much white. So that's a lot better. So I'm going to wash out my brush, grab a little black, Make sure that the white is dry, and I'm going to start at the top of my um, white C and I'm or comma, and I'm just going to draw down to it and thin it out so it looks a little better. So 
So that one's a little better. Now the other one isn't as pointy, so I grabbed a little black and I'm going to um, see if I can make that one a little bit pointier. I'm just starting at the top of the white and drawing it down, and I can't see. Sometimes these glasses that I have now don't work so well. having trouble here tonight so start over yeah that's a little better so now, now this one is a little longer than this one so I'm going to come back and see if I can shorten that one up just by using the black Well, eyes aren't always the easiest. They take a lot of practice and patience. So there we go. That one's, um, now they're more the same length. I'm going to wash out my brush. And I usually have a little brush that's got a pointy handle. So th this is just a liner brush that I have, and it has a nice pointed handle on it, and it, on it, and I'd like to use that for my white dots. You could use a stylus or a round toothpick. So I'm just going to put that tip of that brush into the, the white that's not thinned, the, just the regular white, and I'm going to put a dot at the top of each one of those C's, or commas. And I want them both to be about the same size. So there, that's pretty good. And then I usually add, you can add a little X down in this corner or a little dot. Because these eyes are so little, I'm just going to add a little tiny dot of the white. And again, you're, I'm putting both of them at the same area in each eye. I don't have one on the left and one on the right because I would make them look cross-sided. So they're both kind of right at the bottom. So there's our little eyeballs. So now we're going to take our little, um, we need to put some white on our mittens. So I'm going to use a dry brush and I usually save one just for white. I prop, oh, here's one. So this is just a size 5 Royal and Lane Nickel um, dry brush. I'm just going to dip into my white that's thick, not the thin stuff. Brush it out. And I like to keep my white brushes just for the white because it keeps the white pure. So now I'm going to put white right on the top of his mittens and on a little bit on his nose. And I'm just going to draw that across there. I guess I need a little more. Let's just give it a little highlight, and now we're just going to dab on the top of his mittens like he was playing in the snow. Grab a little more. And I actually put a little bit of that on each antler on the top. And I'll put a little bit on the high part of each antler also. And he's actually almost done. And you can put as little or much of this white on there as you want. So I just put a little on there on the antlers. It looks like he's out there playing in the snow. And that was a little too thick, so I wipe, sometimes you can wipe it off with your hand, fingers quick. I'm just getting it right on the, the tip of it like it would have built up if he was playing out in the snow. Um, Courtney says that she added a link for our dry brushes. It's um, We have a web page. It's Brenda's brushstrokesandbiss.com and um, we do have some supplies on there. We're adding them as we can afford to. So... So I'll just add a little more, maybe a little more white on that nose. Maybe just a little bit on the top of his ears. 
Not too much. Well, there he is. He's like looking pretty good. So now I need got the cranberry. And if you have the pink chalk, you could use the pink chalk. We're just going to add a little bit of cranberry. Um, with Actually, I'm going to use the white that I had in my... I don't want to use that brush, but now I did. So we're already into it. That's how it goes. So I just have a little bit of cranberry in that white brush, and we're just going to give him a little bit of a rosy cheeks. Now I'll need a new white brush, but that's okay. So just a little bit. It doesn't take much. I didn't want to use the straight cranberry. But it's just enough to give him some rosy cheeks. And if you don't want rosy cheeks, you don't have to have rosy cheeks. So now he's he's basically done. You can spray him with the sealer, with a sealer. And then I usually sprinkle glitter on his mittens and then right on the tips of his antlers when I do that. So I'll just do one to show you because I like to do this outside, but we're inside. So I'm going to um, pour a little bit of the glitter in this cap. And that was in your subscription box. Um, we do have the Duncan Matte Sealer. I believe Courtney has that on the web page too. Nope, not yet. Um, you can email Courtney, but actually um, we're going to hold off on the sealer because we're going to the show next Friday and hopefully they have the gloss and the satin and we can offer the three as a set to save on shipping. Otherwise the shipping is going to be like $9.99 on one can because it, it, can't, it has to go by ground. So um, I am using a matte sealer. You could go to your box store um, and get an acrylic sealer that's non-yellowing and use that. Um, but hopefully, um, if if the um, dealer has it in stock, we'll be able to get it. It's been out of stock, and this is the only one we could get. But we hate to send you one can and have to pay so much shipping. So what I'm going to do, I just I usually put him put my pieces on a a brush, or you could use a wooden spoon, and I kind of stick my finger up in there to keep him from flipping around. Shake up my sealer. Spray the bottom, and then I'll spray where his little mitten is, and then I'll take this little thing and just give him a little bit. And I'll spray his antler, and just put a little bit on there. And then we'll do the other side. We'll just do it as long as we got the house smelling, what the heck. I'll just get it on there. Spray his other antler. Get it on there. And then we'll spray his back. And you don't want to get too much sealer so that it runs. So there he is. He's glittered and sealed and he's cute. So we'll let that dry for a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. That's why I like to do that outside. So if you can do that outside or in a really well ventilated area like your garage or something, um, that's probably a good idea. So the, um, that dries really quick, and it the um, the new sealer is called a mat, but it's actually the the previous porcelain, so it's it doesn't have hardly any shine to it. It's very natural looking, which I do like for the animals. So we're gonna sit him down. Then in your subscription box, you also had a piece of red fleece, and it's different than this one because I, I don't have any more of what was in the boxes. But it, excuse me, <laughs> I have to take some water. The sealer got me. It's cut cut right to the length, and his little fringes are on there, so if, if you didn't want the red, you could just go buy a piece of fleece, whatever color you want, and cut it. Um, it's probably like three quarters of an inch. And then there's three little fringes. But when you pick pick it up and you pull it just a little, it has a natural curl. You can see that it wants to curl in. So that's the curl side is the side you put to the inside. So I usually turn him sideways, 
give that a little pull and it's you can see it's nice and curled in bring it around I take the left put it over the front bring it around and tie it just one little tie and then you can take this and give it a little just a little pinch and then all the little the, the raw side that was cut it just it curls under and you don't see that so then you can adjust this a little bit and there you have your cute little reindeer so he's cute and that's the last piece in our Christmas in July box we do have a few boxes left if anyone want, still wants one you can message us that you specifically want the Christmas in July box too and we have a couple of the August on Woodland Animal or Woodland Friends um, but it won't, they won't be available till Monday could be because we're going to be gone but you could message us and Courtney can um, send you an invoice and if you pay they'll be able to be shipped on Monday and then we're working on the next box which Courtney's doing a sneak pre peek tomorrow so I don't want to say too much about it Frank and Halloween. but it's called a Frank and Halloween so that's I think you guys are gonna, really going to be pleased with it so they can email me. Um, you can message Courtney. Um, we will. We're going to do 50 boxes, and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, that's that's sufficient. That no no one has to be turned away. Um, if we know ahead of time, you know, if you know 100% that you want that box, you can let us know, and she has a list going. Um, so that because we don't want anyone to not have a box if they want a box, so. Um, that's about it. Like I said, we'll be gone this weekend to a show. Um, so if you do message us, you probably won't get answered until Monday night. Monday, Monday night. Just because of the internet connection and being out of town. Um, if we're able to, we will. And if you have any questions, just message us or you can add a add to this video because we do, we do continue to watch that for questions. So I hope you guys have a great week and enjoy the weather because summer is like heading out the door already but we're gonna have fun painting and hope you guys are enjoying everything and thank you so much have a good week see you next week